Hello and welcome to this video. So we made a lot of progress in the last video where we actually got the basic loop and trading setup done inside the bot. Now what would be tempting now is to jump straight ahead inside the uh, bot file and start placing trades because we've already inside the Oanda API made some function somewhere if I can find it here to place a trade. However, we need to also know what trades are currently open and actually deal with those trades. So we need to be able to close a trade that's open if we're putting a new one on. And also I mentioned before that we need to put some kind of check in at some point to make sure that the trades that are open should indeed be open. And that means we're going to need some way of reading the trades out of the Oanda API. Now back on the good old documentation for the Oanda API here, we can see under the trade endpoint that we can get using the get verb, uh, the open trades for an account. And you should be familiar with this by now, but the 200 is the response that we get when we actually make a successful request to the API. Anything else will mean something's gone wrong. And then further down, we've got this example here where I get all of the open trades for an account. It's really, really easy. The URL, it's just the, um, the accounts, the account ID, and then the open trades. And the important thing as ever is the response body, which is an object with the last transaction ID. And then importantly, a key for trades and inside there, a list of the trades. Now, one very simple way of dealing with this would be like like we did with the candles, where we simply take this list and store it as a dictionary in Python and then use it. However, we might want to use the trades that we get back from the Oanda API in different places in the code. We may not, but it would be useful probably for us to make another class where actually for these objects that come back from the API, we can store them inside a class object and that allows us to be a little bit flexible later on. So I just want to look at what comes back with the trade and just the mainly the important bits we'll need. So we're going to need the initial units. They'll be the same as the current units because we're not going to do any reduction of units with this bot. The trade ID itself might be useful. Of course, the instrument is really useful because without that, we actually won't know what the trade is belonging to. We've got the time here in UTC format of when it actually opened, the price it opened at and any realized profit or loss. And then we've got some unrealized profit or loss. Now, if you do sort of a partial close of a trade, then any profit you partially close will be in this realized profit and loss section. The other important thing to note here is that everything is coming back as a string. So we'll need to convert our string date into a date, the price into a float here, and the units and the ID will need to be converted into integers. So we're going to start off with a new file that's called awanda underscore trade.py. I guess you can guess what's going to happen inside here if you've been following the course so far. We're going to import date util and the parser there so that we can pass in that string date. And we've done that many times in the backtesting and all that good stuff. And we're going to make ourselves a little new class and we're going to call that awanda trade. And we initialize that using one of the objects that's returned from the awanda API. What that means then is that we'll have the unrealized profit and loss, which is a float converting the string of the unrealized profit and loss. I'll just flick back and you can see that key is here. I won't flick back for all the others just to remind you that we're using the information that comes back in the object. Now in this course, this bot is only ever going to need this because we're not going to do any partial closing of trades or anything like that. We might need the current units that we've got traded. Maybe you want to log it or check things out. So we'll get, grab that as well using an integer conversion. We'll get the ID of the trade and then we'll use the passing from the date util to actually get ourselves a time that the trade was opened. And last but not least, but very importantly, the actual instrument of the trade. Next, a very, very familiar line, which is just get the string representation of all the variables on the class. And then last but not least, we're going to add on a class method. And this class method is going to be to get a trade actually from the API. So when the objects return from the API, and what we can do then is for this API object, we've got return an instance of this OANDA trade. Now, the only advantage at the moment of doing what we're doing here is that we can use easier syntax instead of using these angled brackets. When we use these trades, we can do dot current units or dot ID or something like this later on inside the code. Now, as it stands, this class isn't doing very much. We're simply getting an internal Python class from the object that comes back from OANDA. And really, it's just for syntactic advantages. It's much easier to read the code when we type this dot rather than using the square brackets and the strings and making spelling errors and things. However, hopefully you can imagine now that there's probably a lot more things as you get more advanced in the development of your bots that you might want to do with the trades that come back from Oanda. You might want some logic in here. You might want to save some information to a database and all sorts of things like that. So this is kind of the starting place as a setup to be able to do more things with the uh, with the trades. So now we have this class, we can go down into oanda.py. And the first thing we need to do at the top of oanda.py, if I can actually scroll to the top, 
is import then this new OANDA trade class that we've actually made. And then scrolling down, I'm going to actually take this fetch instruments function here just to save a little bit of time. I'm going to copy that and then below the place trade, but above the candles to data frame, just paste that in there. And then we're going to change the name to open trades and we're going to change the URL to open trades here. And the rest is the same here because it's just a get request. What we do have I want to do here is rather than returning what were instruments and just the pure JSON data, we're going to do something a little bit different this time. We're going to actually ask ourselves, okay, is the status code not equal to 200? If it's not equal to 200, then we haven't been able to get our open trades. Now the way we're going to return this for this course, and I've repeated this so many times, but I'm gonna do it again, is an easy way for the sake of time, but be careful here. If you really need to make sure you've got the open trades and you don't have a 200, then you need something in your code to maybe repeat the request or at least log something or something like this. We're going to return an empty list saying we haven't got any open trades, but we're going to return a false as well to say that something went wrong. Now it could be that the request actually works, but we don't have any trades. And here we might then not have the trades key actually inside the object that was returned. So we can say that if trades is not in data, so just going back to the OANDA API, remember we're looking for this trades key here. If trades is not in data, then we'll return to your list, but we will return true because it means that the request did work and there are no issues. So what we can say is that if we get back an empty list, but we get false back, then we know something's gone wrong and maybe we need to deal with it. Otherwise we can make ourselves a list of the trades. So we can say that the trades is equal to, and then we're going to do list comprehension. And then we'll say OANDA trade dot trade from API brackets X for X in data trades. And that will give us then a list of our trades, but as internal OANDA trade class objects rather than some kind of dictionary just full of strings and things. And the last thing we can do then is we can return trades and then we can return true because we've got a list of our trades and everything has worked successfully. Then down at the bottom of the file with the name equals main, I'm just going to delete all of this, but keep the declaration of our API variable. And now we're going to see if this function actually works and we can get some open trades. To do that, we need some open trades. And we can see then inside the OANDA trading interface, I've placed a couple of trades down here, just a couple of long positions, thousand units, uh, pound yen, pound New Zealand dollar. And if we swing back into the code, we can ask to get a list of trades. We can see if everything was okay. And to do that, we just do API and then open trades. Now, of course, we're not going to see anything here. So we'll say that if okay is equal to true, which means everything ran okay, then we can use some list comprehension to print everything out. So we'll just say that print T, so print the trade for T in trades. So if I just bring up the console as usual and run python underscore oanda api dot pi, you can see that I do get the two trades back. So I've got the pound New Zealand, the pound Japanese yen, the current unrealized profit, number of units, they were both long, so the number is positive, the IDs and the time that the trade was opened. Okay, good, so we've got that important piece of code written. We're now able from our bot to get ourselves a list of the currently open trades on the account, which we need to use when we're actually doing the trading strategy. Thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.